Sod Phase 4 has so much awesome content. The 11 Molten Core bosses, Instance Azergos and Kazakh, the aggressive twice a week lockout system, then there's the rank and grind, the reputations to max out, the raid attunements, the list goes on and on. But as exciting as this is, it does come with a dark side. This is likely the death of alts and season of discovery. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how the big raid changes, the 11 boss molten core, the instance raid bosses, the lockout system, how they're going to make it so much harder to have alts in phase four. Then we're going to talk about the tarnished undermine real currency and why you're going to have to do so many more dungeons than you ever had to do back in the day. Then we're talking about reputation and rank grinds and why these are going to be taking up so much of your time in phase four. Finally, we're talking community reaction on both sides of the issue. So in a recent Phase 4 preview video from the Blizzard devs, they really dropped a bombshell. The endgame raids are going to be on a twice a week lockout, and that means they're going to reset on Tuesdays and Saturdays. MC will be once per week, but still, 7 raids a week per character. And these aren't your standard classic raids either. Molten Core is cranked up to 11 bosses, with 2 additional difficulty modes as well. It's a safe bet that with the extra boss, a casual guild might take an entire night to clear Molten Core. Meanwhile, the sweaty guilds, they're going to be spending quite a bit of extra time progging the difficulty modes in Ragnaros. On top of Molten Core, we're also getting instance world bosses for Azragos and Kazakh. If you're keeping track, that means you're all the way up to 7 raids per week per character. In fairness, when I brought this up on my stream, a lot of people said you don't really have to do all 8 raids a week, you could miss some lockouts. But honestly, is anybody going to want to miss a lockout? You might be missing your Thunder Fury or your Hand of Rag and you never see it again. Unfortunately, as WoW players, our brains are just kind of forced to do all the lockouts. And Blizzard really isn't helping either. They're stoking the flames by promising over a thousand new and updated items. That's the new tier sets that every single player is going to want to complete. And I know I wouldn't want to miss a lockout for the newly buffed weapons as well. Look at the key to the city. Makes Staff of Domination look like a child's toy. Now, don't get me wrong, the Phase 4 news is pretty much the best WoW stuff I've seen in a long time. The devs are doing a great job. But, I do worry that it might be too much too soon, and it might burn some players out. For reference in Cataclysm, just hitting those three raids a week, it really takes up all my free time. But now in Phase 4 of Season of Discovery, we're probably raiding every single day, which means there's barely any time for alts. So another bombshell that Blizzard dropped is that in Phase 4, we're getting access to every single dungeon, including Blackrock Depths and even Dire Maul. Across the board as well, dungeon drops are going to be updated, including a newly improved Iron Foe. And that won't be the only rare weapon to farm either, as rogues are definitely going to want to get their Fell Strikers too. On top of the new items, there might even be an entirely new dungeon coming as well. That dungeon would presumably contain even more pre to farm, though the details were really vague at this point. As a Classic fan, this is amazing news to be finally getting a new dungeon in Classic style, but it is a whole lot when you combine it with all the other systems that we're going to be doing. Take the new currency we'll be farming called the Tarnished Undermine Reals. These are going to be dropping in every single endgame Classic dungeon. Then that currency is going to be used to buy different pre items. So we've seen this drill before in Wrath of the Lich King, but we've also seen pretty much the exact idea with Wild Offerings. It's pretty clear to me that this would be bringing back the World Tour idea from back in Wrath of the Lich King, which some people liked, but other people thought was a little too overwhelming. Personally, I really enjoyed doing those World Tours in Wrath, but when you think about doing them on three or four alts, it becomes really overwhelming really fast. See, even before the new currency, it was a really safe bet that players would be spending a whole lot of time in all these endgame dungeons getting their pre -bis. But now it's really been cranked all the way up to 11. Now on top of all the raids and dungeons we'll be doing, there's also going to be this huge focus on ranking in Phase 4. We all remember the very arduous rank grind back in Classic all the way to 14, but luckily you'll only have to rank to 10 in this phase. Still, the rank 10 grind is going to take the average player weeks of time, going back to Ultrac Valley, doing the new Blackrock Eruption event, even going back to the Blood Moon events too. And that grind is going to be likely required, at least if the Sunken Temple phase has anything to say about it. I know my rank 7 set practically carried me through Sunken Temple, and I still wear the pieces today. But it's not just ranking we'll be doing either. Blizzard is also promising new recipes for factions like Argent Dawn and Hydraxian Waterlords. These are really time-consuming grinds, 
and even doing them on a main character is a lot to ask, but imagine some people doing multiple Arja Dawn rep farms, two, three characters. It's insane. It's just a really big ask when we're going to be farming our previous gear. We're going to be doing seven raids a week, and we're going to be doing the Blackrock Eruption event every two hours. So the Blizzard devs are definitely aware that Phase 4 has an insane amount of content. That's why they're making a few very unprecedented changes to some of the game systems. The first system change is how they actually plan to roll out the phases. So on July 11th, we'll be getting access to all the Phase 4 new content, except we're not getting any of the raids. Then on July 18th, we'll be getting access to the new World Boss raids, and finally on July 25th, we'll be getting Molten Core on Onyxia. So the main idea behind this is that you're giving players way more time to farm their Prebis gear. It's also an admission from Blizzard that once the raids come out, there really won't be a lot of time to do anything else. The last thing Blizzard's trying to do to make the phase ult friendlier is the Blackrock Eruption event itself. So if you're in the mountain, you're going to get 300% honor, which makes this an amazing event for getting to rank 10 really fast. Meanwhile, if you're out of the mountain, you can do all these different daily quests every single day. You can get nearly 2,000 Thorian Brotherhood rep and 2,000 Hydraxian Waterlords. It's going to be a really nice way for us to get a bunch of rep on our alts. So with all the Phase 4 content announcements, we got quite a bit of community feedback as well on both sides of the issue. The first big tweet came from content creator Sarth, and it's concerned about how very sweaty players are actually going to finish the rank 10 grind very early on, which means that the Blackrock PvP, the Blood Moon PvP, the Battlegrounds, they may not have a huge population in Phase 4. Now, while this is definitely valid, if you only play one character, if you have a lot of alts, I do think you're going to have more than enough PvP content. Then there was a forum post from a Grend talking about the raid lockout system and how they're moving it from 8 lockouts a week to 7. Now, personally, I still think 7 lockouts a week is a little bit excessive, especially if you play a bunch of alts, but we'll just have to wait and see. We also got a really unique suggestion on Reddit from Appropriant, and he thought of the idea of using the Tarnished Undermine Real currency to be able to purchase different world buffs. I just really thought that was a unique idea. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So we've talked about how the aggressive raid lockout system could impede your ability to play alts. We've also talked about how the Priebus grind is insane in Phase 4, especially with the new Tarnished Undermine Real currency. And we covered how the ranking and the reputation grinds are going to be pretty old unfriendly in Phase 4. But we did also cover how Blizzard is looking to try to fix some of these issues, and they're really focused on all the little things to make Phase 4 as good as possible. I'd love to hear your thoughts about whether Phase 4 feels a little old unfriendly, or whether it's the perfect amount of content. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to keep it here and subscribe, and then check out my ultimate Phase 4 prep video next.